And if you've joined us, we've been listening to a joint news conference by the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, and the President of the European Commission, Jose Manuel Barroso, in Canberra. Just to recap the uh, domestic news uh, part of that, uh, Prime Minister Julia Gillard was asked about Tony Abbott's offer to help change migration laws. And Julia Gillard said on that that the opposition needs to come to grips with the legal advice that the government has released. And if that offer is in indeed sincere. Tony Abbott needs to work with the government on offshore processing and not on his own narrow plan. Well, to discuss the broader issue of EU-Australian relations, we're joined in the studio by Oliver Hartwich, who's an economist and a keen watcher of European affairs from the Centre for Independent Studies. Thank you very much for coming in today. It's not often we see uh, a visit from an EU official. First of all, he says that the Greek government is not too concerned about reports that it's failing to meet its budget deficit targets. Is he being an optimist here? I think he's very optimistic because what we have seen in recent days is that the Greek debt crisis isn't being resolved. We had a visit um, from the European Central Bank, the European Commission and the International Monetary Fund to Athens last week and they were meant to check the progress the Greek government has made in consolidating its finances and on Friday they left because they said that uh, the Greeks still had more technical work to do which is a very diplomatic way of saying they were not really happy with the progress they've made. And so I think Barroso is too optimistic when assessing the Greek situation because the Greek government has clearly signaled that they are not going down the path of further, con further consolidation because they have been promised now 30-year loans and they see that basically as a guarantee that they don't have to do mu that much themselves anymore. Well, is he o overly optimistic on the entire European economy because he says he doesn't anticipate a recession? Well, he has to be optimistic. He's the president of the European Commission, but I don't think he's right because clearly you can see that Europe has several crises at once. They have a debt crisis, they have a crisis of competitiveness, they have a crisis in trying to make monetary union work, and on top of that, I'm afraid there's a banking crisis waiting to happen. And unfortunately, the European Union so far hasn't really addressed the underlying issues. They have just try been trying to buy more time, kick the can down the road, and I think that process cannot go on for much longer. So who do we target the blame to if someone has to be blamed for perhaps the somewhat laid-back attitude to where the European economy is heading? Well, the problem is really that it is a political project. Uh, the whole Euro, European Monetary Union, was a political project and they try to keep it alive, despite all the economic indicators showing that it is really an unworkable currency. And that's what they've been trying with Greece. They had the first Greek rescue package in May 2010, and they had a second package announced uh, earlier this year. And they're really trying to buy time to get things in order. And all the while they're trying all of this, um, you can see that actually the figures are deteriorating. The figures we're getting out of Greece show that the Greek recession is actually worse than they originally feared. And that the Greek government has to borrow even more. So how influential overall is Jose Manuel Barroso? Perhaps less influential um, than it used to be about a year ago, because we now have, of course, a second big player on the European scene, and that's the president of the European Council, that's Hermann von Rompuy. And if you can believe press reports just issued today in Spiegel magazine, Germany's leading news magazine, Angela Merkel and Nicolas Sarkozy are actually quite keen to give a greater role to the president of the European Council, which also then means diminishing the role that the European Commission still plays. And that means that actually Jose Manuel Barroso may be a bit of a lame duck president. Well, he does at least seem to see eye to eye with the Prime Minister Julia Gillard on the climate change debate and in particular the carbon tax. Well, certainly. I mean, the Europeans have been pushing for uh, climate change measures. They've had their own emissions trading scheme now for six years. And of course, it had an enormous uh, a bit of teething problems in the beginning, and it didn't quite work as well as the Europeans had uh, hoped. However, I think the Europeans' influence on the international stage is clearly diminished, which we could see in Copenhagen. In Copenhagen, the Europeans tried to push for a new international agreement. And in the end, of course, China and India didn't play by their rules, and the Americans didn't listen to the Europeans either. And so the Europeans were actually quite isolated on that front. So I think if Julia Gillard really hopes for an international, for a global agreement on climate change, she should not just talk to the Europeans because she doesn't have to convince them. She has to talk to the Chinese and the Indians. So just overall, how would you couch this meeting between Prime Minister Gillard and the European Commission President? Is it something that's a bit of a distraction for both of them from their domestic problems? Well, that's how it seems on one hand. On the other hand, I think it is always welcome when there is uh, contact between Australia and Europe because if you look at it in two, uh, terms of two-way trade, 
Uh, about 15% of Australia's two-way trade is still with Europe, so it is still a major That's trading sizable. partner. It's quite a, an important trading partner if you take the European Union 27 countries as a whole. So I think in, in that sense it is welcome and actually these visits don't happen nearly as often as they should have. Okay, Oliver Hartwich from the Centre for Independent Studies. Many thanks for your analysis. Thank you.